puppetry is something I've kind of done on and off since I was eight. Stopped for a little bit when I was in my, my teen years and then picked it back up again uh, in my early 20s. And originally as a kid, I would just make puppets out of found objects and, and trash basically. And then uh, later on, mostly by watching making of DVDs, I learned how to sculpt and cast latex puppets, which is what I've been doing ever since. So later on in March, I have been booked to perform at a Doctor Who art show. And Doctor Who has always been one of my favorite shows ever since I was a little kid. So I already had a puppet of one of the characters, The Silence. So I'm making a puppet of the 11th Doctor. And we are going to be doing a puppet show uh, of Doctor Who at the Doctor Who art show. So my process for building the puppets is first I build a sculpt of what I want it to look like out of non-hardening clay. I've been using the same clay for almost 20 years now. So the clay that I sculpt my puppets out of now has pretty much made every puppet in my studio. And after I've made the non-hardening sculpt, I make a plaster cast of that, pull the clay sculpt out, replace it with liquid latex rubber, and when that dries, we have a rubber puppet. So after you've made the clay sculpt, you're gonna wanna prep it ahead of time before you put the plaster on because you want it to be easy to get the, the sculpture out. And they do make mold release. It's made out of silicone and different things like that. I tend to just use cooking oil because it's significantly cheaper and then later you can use it to make french fries with. So the apartment I'm in now is a, is a one bedroom, which in the Bay Area is practically a palace. Before, before I was here, I was in a 10 by 10 studio. So this is actually a lot, of, uh, a lot more space than I, I used to work with. And almost everything I do is probably an example of what you shouldn't do because the plaster gets everywhere, everything gets everywhere. I always keep a slop bucket when I'm rinsing off tools and everything. Uh, when I'm making the plaster cast because you don't want that in your sink. That, that'll almost guarantee that you'll ruin your sink almost immediately. Uh, so a lot of the techniques I'm using today you should probably be a bit more careful about than, than I am. What I'm working on in, in, in this shoot is kind of a little bit anomalous. I usually don't work on human characters and I most of my puppets are creatures and I think I enjoy being able to make a character that is something that you absolutely would not see in nature. Uh, I like being able to make completely fantastical creatures and then being able to create a personality for them. The, the personality usually being a lot more uh, base and crude than their fantastic elements would probably suggest. I've been doing this long enough that I should absolutely be better at making two-sided molds. For, for those of you that, that don't know, most of, mine, uh, most of my puppets have one-sided mold, which means basically just one slab of plaster on top. Um, but some things that uh, have more of a muzzle, like my Velociraptor puppet was made with a two-sided mold, which means that it's actually two plaster molds stuck together and then you pour the latex inside. It's a, it's a pretty basic uh, tool for casting. I'm terrible at it. I've never been able to master it. Uh, I do one once every couple of years. My, my partner bought me a, a DVD from Stan Winston Studios to try and teach me how to do it. Still terrible at it. And I know it's, it's a very basic thing, but I'm just I'm awful at it. Uh, I'd love to be able to figure out how to do the mechanics of moving eyes and things like that. Terrible at mechanical things like that. Uh, I, I think I'm, I'm doing decently, or at least better at, at the sculpting and, and 